Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. One of the defining features of the channel over the last two years has been a glass of bourbon, usually an old-fashioned, sitting next to any of the board games that I'm playing. Now, I don't drink a lot, and I don't advocate for drinking a lot, but I do, being from Kentucky and also being a connoisseur of whiskeys, bourbons, and ryes, I do enjoy a good bourbon, and I specifically enjoy a good old-fashioned. And it's become part of a, you know, habit or, or a staple of my board game experience. Sitting down with a bunch of friends, making cocktails for everyone around the table, and enjoying a good drink, sometimes that drink being a glass of milk, but enjoying a good drink while playing a game is one of the elements that brings us together. And I usually have a bottle or two floating around behind the set here, and today, I thought I'd bring them all out to the forefront to read a little bit of flavor text, uh, talk to you about my recommendations, what I have discovered over the last year or so of trying, sampling, and learning about all of these different, uh, you know, all of these different bourbons, whiskeys, and ryes. I know sometimes I get the terminology wrong. I use bourbon to cover it all, but that family of whiskeys is is really what I'm exploring. Uh, and I thought I would. Uh, I thought I'd try a few that I haven't had an opportunity to try yet here on camera and let you know my first impressions and experiences with them. Uh, so, if you enjoy this video, if you enjoy these non-board game videos, these more conversational videos, I have actually started a brand new channel, uh, Jesse Samuel Anderson, a personal brand where I'm going to be talking about entrepreneurship, going to be, you know, reviewing products like whiskey or my brand new Spyderco uh, knife here, talking just about, uh, you know, productivity, beginning new things, how you market, uh, how you build community, the importance of investing and traveling, and, and just all of those more abstract things that maybe don't fit here on a board game channel as often. Don't worry, some of these videos will still be here. But if that sounds interesting to you, I'm releasing a video nearly every day over there, so follow the top link here in this video description, and go check out some of the other content that I have there. Today I'm going to be doing a story time talking about uh, how I got my first editing computer and my first camera, how I actually started learning how to become a videographer and progress to spending eight years now as a full-time uh, freelancer videographer kind of working for myself. All that being said, uh, another thing that I want to point out is if you want to support this channel, uh, I have created a list of some of my favorite uh, additions to my bourbon collection. The items that I use to make my old fashions, some of the glasses that I enjoy, uh, and other components. Uh, if you follow that link over to Amazon down below, anything you purchase within 24 hours of following that link will pay me a commission. It is a abstract affiliate marketing program. It just basically means that if I create categories and share those with you, then anything you purchase over there on Amazon, uh, they give me some degree of credit for. So if you want to support this channel, if you already shop on Amazon, uh, save that link or follow that link whenever you make your purchases. Uh, it'll go a long way to just helping this become more stable by providing multiple sources of stability and revenue and income over a course of time. All that being said, I know my introductions are always slightly too long. We better go ahead and get into these bourbons. And I, again, not all bourbons, I'm going to get to this bottle very soon, but I want to point out this bottle of Jameson here. Not because I actually drink Jameson or uh, because I have, uh, you know, I've moved away from Irish whiskeys. I've moved heavily into the bourbon category. Being from Kentucky, I'd like to know the most, as much as I can about it. But this is actually, I'm 28 years old now, my birthday's in three days, and this is actually the very first bottle of liquor, the very first bottle of whiskey that I ever purchased. I don't drink a lot, and so over the years, this is just sort of, it sat for four or five years before I realized that I still had my first ever bottle around, and now it's just sort of a memento. It's sort of a, a thing that I have that's a, a fun memory um, and a fond reflection. I bought this with one of my best friends from college, the guy that actually did uh, all of my tattoos back when I was a tattoo artist. And so uh, I thought I'd bring this out and show it off to you. 
Now, there is flavor text here, and so I thought I'd read a little bit of the flavor text just to give you some context for these bottles that I'm talking about. Uh, Jameson Irish Whiskey. John Jameson founded his distillery in Dublin in 1780 to, uh, to realize his ambition of making the highest quality whiskey. Today, Jameson is still made in single distillery using rich uh, pot still whiskey from malted, unmalted barley and the finest grain whiskey, both distilled three times for smoothness. Now, I haven't opened this or tried this since, uh, since way back in the day, and I figured for this video and to celebrate a new year and to celebrate me um, kind of crossing 21,000 yesterday, I'd give, this, I'd give this another swig. Have another, have another little drop of uh, Jameson whiskey, which I've not had in forever, and uh, another little drop from a bottle that I've had around for going on eight years now. Now, I'm not an expert when it comes to drinking or sampling bourbons or whiskeys, so, you know, this isn't going to be official. I'm not even going to go through the, oh, yes, a small bit of, of dried apricot in there. I'm just going to tell you, like, it smells like alcohol, like the nose on it. Alcohol, kind of rubbing alcohol. A little bland, kind of flat. Could be that it sat around for eight years. Uh, it doesn't have the depth that I expect out of these bourbons. Um, let me know. Is it is it that Jameson itself is sort of bland and flat, or is it that an eight-year-old bottle that has had uh, enough room to aerate for a period of time has lost all punch and flavor? All that being said... Let's dive into some of these some of these bourbons, or specifically Burr Rise. Now, this one I got because of that beautiful jackalope on the front of it. Uh, and I'm going to bring this one out because High West here has been my biggest surprise of the year. High West, and specifically this Burr Rye, is probably the best bottle of whiskey, of bourbon, and it's as a bourbon and rye blend that I have had all year. This is delicious. I mean, to the point where the moment I find more of these bottles, I will be picking up a few of them just to, uh, just to stockpile, just to have, just to open on special occasions. And it doesn't hurt that our, uh, the other ancestral beast is on the front. Now there is, like always, a little bit of flavor text. The jackalope, also called the analabit, is an antlered species of rabbit, a cross between a jackrabbit and an antelope. It is rumored that pockets of jackalope populations continue to persist in the American West, its native home. In the Old West, when cowboys would gather by their campfires to sing at night, jackalopes would frequently be heard singing back, mimicking the voices of the cowboys. When chased, the jackalope will use its vocal abilities to elude capture. For instance, when chased by people, it'll call out of phrases such as, There he goes! Over there! in order to throw persuaders, pursuers, off his track. Legend suggests the best way to catch a jackalope is to leave it with a little bit of whiskey, as they have a peculiar fondness for this drink. Once intoxicated, the animal becomes slower and easier to hunt. Believe it or not, all this mythology is true. We didn't make any of it up. That is why High West created Burr Rye, our proprietary blend of mature bourbon and rye, both favorites both favorites of real cowboys, and sure to attract even the most finicky of jackalopes. And that is 100% the case. This is, uh, you know, made out of Utah with this gorgeous bottle. This is my surprise of the year. My favorite bourbon, my favorite whiskey, my favorite blend that, I, that I've came across. Uh, and opens my eyes to trying things that are not distilled in Kentucky, which is a little bit sacrilegious, but I am, I am open to it. I'll set that over to the side. Let's get into a few more, uh, a few more bottles that are classics for me, and then we'll do a few more. I've, I have two more that I'd like to try here on camera. My, my bourbon experience has started with Woodford Reserve here. I actually just picked up this bottle. I mean, I go through these bottles uh, like water when friends are over. This is just a good drinking bourbon. It, it mixes great. Uh, you put it with a little bit of Coke if someone doesn't like straight bourbon whiskey. Uh, it mixes great. It, it maintains its flavor. It's a little bit sweeter. It's one of the reasons why I liked it uh, so much when I first started drinking. You'll see a theme throughout all of this. I lean towards or prefer a sweeter bourbon. 
Uh, I like I like candy. I like sugar. I like old fashions. You know, you add a little bit of a little bit of bitters, some nice caramelized oranges in there, um, and they get really good. But Woodford Reserve, this is where I started, and from there I sort of have adjusted my profile a little bit. I'm not a big Maker's Mark fan, but uh, 46 and Four Roses are going to be the other two very accessible, very drinkable uh, introductions into my standard lineup. If I'm grabbing a bottle just to bring over to a friend's house and I want something that I think is going to be quality, that we're all going to enjoy, and that can stand on its own if paired with a little bit of ice or just had completely neat or clean, or is not so expensive that you can't justify mixing it or, or doing something more creative with it and still will maintain its flavor profile. Uh, these three here are going to be my go-to. All of them are a little bit sweeter. I think Four Roses is a little bit sharper, but very, very drinkable. The 46, Makers 46 is my favorite product that Makers puts out. Uh, and it is, I believe it is finished in something like port or mixed. Uh, let's see here. Stave profile number 46. At Maker's Mark, we created Wood Finish Series to explore unique expressions of our signature Maker Mark whiskey, originally crafted by my parents in 1953. Maker's Mark 46 starts with fully matured Maker's Mark. We then add 10 seared French oak staves to each barrel and place it in our limestone cellar for an extra aging process. This creates a bolder version of Maker Mark with pronounced notes of caramel and vanilla and has become known as stave profile number 46. So it's finished with, it's finished in a different way from standard. It's finished with those oak staves. Uh, and it just, for me, brings out those notes, makes it sweeter, makes this much more palatable than, uh, than some of the others, than, than standard makers, than straight, than straight rye, um, than bullet, for instance. Uh, I really like these three. And there's a little bit of flavor text here on Four Roses as well. We don't want to ignore this one. And you can tell, uh, like I said, these, these are my drinking bottles. These are ones I do, not, I do not shy away from. Paul Jones, the founder of Four Roses Bourbon, became smitten by a beautiful southern belle. He sent a proposal to her, and she replied that if her answer were yes, she would wear a corsage of roses on her gown to the upcoming grand ball. When she showed up the night of her ball in her beautiful gown, she wore a corsage of red roses. He later named his bourbon Four Roses as a symbol of his devout passion for the lovely Belle. I love this flavor text. I love this story, this history that's told through, uh, you know, the things that we're gathering around. Let's go ahead and try another one. Uh, I've had this bottle for a while. Hard to get here in Kentucky. A popular bland, uh, brand because uh, this, is, this is going to be uh, Weller. Uh, this is this is just normal, normal Weller Special Reserve, the original weeded bourbon. But I forget the I forget the name. I think it's Pappy. Uh, but it's this is going to be um, this is going to be a bourbon that people say resembles a multi hundred dollar bourbon. Uh, but you know if you can find it, if you can wait in line long enough, you can pick them up for thirty, forty dollars from time to time whenever they're released into the marketplace. People will wait in line to grab bottles of Weller. Uh, I haven't tried this one in a while. It has been sitting, aerating a little bit, so it might not be as good as it originally was, but I thought I'd give this one another sip. I picked this up because of the history, because of the namesake, because of the popularity around it. I remember it being decent. I don't remember it being shockingly better than, than any of the other ones I have. Um, I was younger when I was trying it, but uh, let's see what's, what's on the back here. W.I. Weller was born in Kentucky on the year of 1825 after serving with a Louisville... Louisville Brigade in the 1840s, Weller returned to Louisville uh, to open his wholesale liquor business. He is reported to have used the slogan, Honest Whis Whiskey, at an honest price. His weeded recipe of bourbon had a softer, smoother taste that became very popular. Pappy Van Winkle eventually merged with Weller's namesake company with APH Stitzel Distillery to form the Stitzel Weller Distillery. This delicate bourbon with hints of caramel and honey honors the Americans' first wh whiskey pioneers. So let's give this one a little bit of try. See, uh, see what I still think of it after it's uh, after it's been ruined by time and age and you know. By the way, I know I don't have uh, snifter glasses. I don't have the. I have my uh, Four Roses glasses here. The 130 year anniversary friend gave these to me. Smells good. Smells smells like rubbing alcohol. 
you know, the standard, that's what you're looking for in a good, in a good bourbon. Hmm. I do like that. I mean, I like that way more than the Jameson. Uh, rich, got a little bit of fire on the end. Tastes, I mean, tastes and chews. It tastes like wood. You can really, you can really like, it's got that, uh, it's just, it's just got that woody note, that kind of smoky note that you're looking for in a bourbon. It is good. It's, it's really drinkable. Not as sweet as some of the other ones that I like, but again, I'm biased towards a more sweet bourbon. Uh, but no, I mean, it is, it is very, it is very tasty. Um, I can see why people like it. It's not my favorite. Doesn't, doesn't rise in the ranks too high, but I can see why people like it. Basil Hayden's Dark Rye. This is going to be my old-fashioned bourbon. This is a rye... Well, it's, again, it's not a bourbon. It's a rye whiskey. I know. I call everything bourbon. Uh, but this is a Kentucky straight rye whiskey blended with Canadian rye whiskey and port. This is actually blended with some port wine in there. And that just brings out fruit and, and notes. And it's so sweet and it's so delicious. I remember the first time I tried this, it was over at Math, Matt's house up in D.C. We were playing Space Explorers, I believe... Uh, uh, and I just, I took a sip and I went, oh my gosh. It was just like candy. It was like drinking, it was like drinking, you know, just drinking nectar. It's, it, it drinks like a wine does, but a very, a very heavy, a very, a very condensed wine, right? With a decent amount of alcohol in it. It's a 40%, so 80 proof. Uh, and this is now what I make all of my old fashions out of, if I'm able to. Um, that Those sweet notes, those fruit notes blended with the other fruit that you're adding in, the, the sugars, the bitters, the ar ar aromatic elements, uh, it, makes, it makes old fashions shine in a way that I just can't express. This artful blend of Kentucky straight rye whiskey, Canadian rye whiskey, and a touch of port creates a rich amber pour with ruby undertones. Bottle that is smooth, 80 proof, this dark, rich expression offers uh, s the subtlest fruit sweetness to complement the traditional rye spice. The result is Basil Hayden's Dark Rye, an approachable and wholly inspired experience to create any way you'd like. And that is true. I, I don't drink this plain as much anymore, but I, I still do really enjoy it plain. Things like your High West, though, is just going to be a better bottle for drinking. If you appreciate what a bourbon or a rye can do, what a whiskey can do. Uh, but this one here, if you like a mixed drink, if you like, uh, if you like shifting the, uh, the game up a little bit, amazing. Now, paired with that is going to be a bottle that is almost impossible to get at this point. We actually, when I was moving from... Uh, Kentucky down to Washington DC or from Washington DC back down to Kentucky found one liquor store that had stockpiled these bottles and my friend and I uh, purchased I believe a case of 24 or 28 bottles of Basil Hayden's Caribbean rye now why is that well they're not making these anymore this is a discontinued bottle uh, it's a limited release and this is the best best it makes hands down the best whiskey and and coke that i've ever had you see this is distilled in or finished in uh a caribbean rye, rye whiskey finished with rum so it's it's blended it's blended whiskey in in a rum barrel and it brings out those sweet rum notes that that sugar cane right uh and just pulls it into a profile that i mean I don't like this flat. I don't like it straight. I don't like it with ice. I like this with Coca-Cola and by golly, does it live up to its purpose. I'll open one of these. I'll open a bottle or a can of Coke and me and my friend, like we will clean one of these in an evening because it's so darn good. Uh, and I have three bottles of this that genuinely are just being salvaged and saved uh, until, you know, moments where they should be opened. This unique release blends Kentucky straight rye whiskey with Canadian rum, whiskeys and a subtle touch of black strap rum. The result is an amber spirit with aromas of tossed oak, brown spices, and molasses. At a smooth 80 proof, the rye spice and oak flavors are perfectly complemented by the rum's in inherent sweetness. For a well-rounded spirit, you can enjoy any way you like. Yes, if you're able to find this, 
pick one of these up, not only is it going to be hard to get your hands on, it is also, it is also just delicious and well worth exploring. Uh, a bottle that I picked up on New Year's Eve as a celebratory, uh, you know, let's, let's move into the new year, let's try something good. I was so impressed with High West here that I thought to myself, let's give, uh, let's give their straight mixed bourbon a taste. And Utah's coming into play. Not only is this bottle beautiful, the color is absolutely gorgeous, but the bourbon, the liquid inside of it is delicious. It is not as good as this limited release, uh, but it really, I mean, High West is a contender for probably my favorite producer right now. They have not steered me wrong so far, and I'm super excited to try some of their other things. And they also give so much flavor text, so much context for what they're doing. High West Distillery is passionate about the American West's natural beauty. That is why we want to raise awareness of one of the most fantastic projects of our time, the American Prairie Reserve in northeastern Montana. This is an amazing effort to assemble the largest wildlife reserve in the lower 48 states. When stepping onto the plains of the American Prairie Reserve, it is easy to imagine a landscape that Lewis and Clark and Native Americans saw it. With thundering herds of bison, racing bands of broghorn antelopes, and prairie dog towns dotting the horizon, when complete, the reserve will be approximately 5,000 square miles, larger than Yellowstone, Yosemite, and Grand uh, Teton National Parks combined. Go to the AmericanPrairie.org to learn about how to visit and support this worthy cause. Capable of running at speeds of up to 55 miles per hour, the proghorn antelope is North America's fastest land mammal and performs the continent's second longest land migration of more than 500 miles. Because of their love of travel, proghorns require large areas and open spaces uh, and intact grasslands. Moreover, proghorn populations have decreased 98% since the 1800s due to habitat destruction. American Prairie Reserve helps proghorns through its ongoing fence removal efforts by constructing wildlife corridors. Our American Prairie is caref carefully crafted blend of straight bourbon at at least two years old. Sourced whiskeys, see highwest.com for details, making a great sipper and a thoughtful person's whiskey. High West pledges to donate 10% of our after-tax profits to the sale of this bottle to the American Prairie Re Reserve. Be thoughtful and help us protect the preserve, protect and preserve America's natural resources. High West is coming in. I mean, they're coming in as they're, it's so good. And the last bottle that we have here, uh, Chicken Cock. This was something that my parents got for me for Christmas. It not only has a really cool bottle here, it has a bird on the cover. And you know, I like birds. This is the most aviary forward board game channel in the world. But it's also supposed to be just a really quality bottle. Uh, so, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. One of the oldest bourbon brands in the U.S., Chicken Cock was established in 1856 in Paris Bourbon County, Kentucky. Seven decades later, it was a staple of Pro Prohibition-era speakeasies, including the world-famous Cotton Club, known as the Famous Old Brand. The Chicken Cock died off after World War II, but now has returned to its rightful place on the pantheon of great American heritage whiskeys. And this is going to be the last one that I give a sip to. I have waited to open this one until I did this video with you here on camera. Uh, excited to give this one a try. And I hope you're enjoying this content. We don't do a lot of non-board game stuff here on the channel, but uh, I hope you enjoy what we are doing. And that is not a good, that is not a good sign for chicken cock because the cork has uh, leveraged itself in there. Let's see if I can get it out. I did get it out, but I'm gonna have to glue that before I, uh, well, let's uh, give this one a sip. Like I was saying, I hope you enjoy the content that we're producing here. Uh, we don't do a lot of non-board game stuff here, but on that other channel over there, my personal brand, Jesse Samuel Anderson dot, uh, not dot com, but Jesse Samuel Anderson, if you like this conversational stuff, if you like motivational stuff, if you want to dive into uh, pursuing entrepreneurship and, and building something for yourself, uh, that is where I'll be having all of those type of conversations. Smells like rubbing alcohol with a little bit of a sweet note of like sweeter rubbing alcohol. Let's, uh, let's try this one out. It's hot. Ooh. 
more more spice um, ends with a little bit of a sweeter note uh, but up front all the way from like the tip of my tongue down the back of my throat this one was spicy now what proof is this 90 proof so 45 percent alcohol not significantly higher than some of the other ones that I'm drinking I mean uh, some of these go down a little bit smoother uh, it's not bad it doesn't strike me it, it is not my favorite it hasn't it didn't it didn't surprise me. Uh, some of these, like like High West, both of the times I poured High West, when I did uh, Basil Hayden's Dark Rye, uh, well, Dark Rye over here, I just, it, it immediately grabbed me, right? It gets you by the throat and you, and you, you go, oh my gosh, this is something different than I've ever had before. Um, this one isn't doing that. It's not a, it's about as standard bourbon as, uh, as I would expect. Um, yeah, like I said, I don't, I don't know a lot of the lingo. I'm not an expert when it comes to tasting things. I just enjoy bourbons. Hmm. A little bit of water, a little ice cube in here mixed up. Uh, the coolness is nice, opens up the flavor a little bit more, uh, really removes that sting. I mean, uh, just a little bit of water in here has really, really placated it, but it's also made it a little bit flat. Uh, it doesn't, it didn't, it doesn't hold up as well with that ice. It's a little bitter, a little bitter, ends on a sweet note. I don't know what flavors those are. But yeah, I think I like it with a little bit of ice in it, but it really does, it really does decrease how much of a, of a spirit this one has. Uh, so, with all that being said, thank you for watching. Let me know what bourbons, what whiskeys, what ryes I need to try moving into this next year, into 2021. And if you enjoy this, if you enjoy this conversation, well, maybe we'll continue talking about it. We'll do some featured, uh, you know, whiskey and board game pairings or something along those lines. Uh, remember... Follow that link over to check out my other channel. And if you want to support this channel, uh, save that Amazon profile or click on that Amazon profile anytime you're shopping over on Amazon. I know a lot of us use it for our daily stuff at this point. And so uh, you just doing your normal shopping, nothing additional, your normal shopping on Amazon through my portal uh, will pay me anywhere from 5 to 7% of what you're purchasing um, as an affiliate link. And so that'll go to support and stabilize what we're doing here uh, while also, um, you know, allowing you to uh, allowing you to, to do what you're already doing over there. And I'm going to glue this together before squeezing that on too tight. And uh, I think that's it. Whatever the case, whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.